Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about myocardial bridging. So myocardial bridging is a congenital variant of coronary artery in which a portion of an epicardial coronary artery takes an intramuscular course. So what happens is normally any coronary artery, it runs over the uh, muscle, that is the muscle over the myocardium, it runs over the muscle. As you can see here, this is the muscle, myocardium and over the myocardium, the normal vessel will actually run. In case of myocardial bridging, what happens is that some part of the coronary vessel, coronary artery uh, goes inside the muscle and the, some part of muscle overlies this coronary artery. So this overlying muscle is overlying this coronary artery and during this uh, systole or during contraction, this muscle can go and compress this coronary artery leading to symptoms. So most frequently, the middle segment of left anterior descending artery is involved. So this arrangement of tunnel segment of artery under the bridge leads to vessel compression as I told that this muscle can cause vessel compression and that occurs during systole. So while frequently it is asymptomatic, this condition may be, can, may be responsible for adverse complications like angina, myocardial ischemia, acute coronary syndrome, left ventricular dysfunction, erythemias and also sudden cardiac death. So myocardial bridging of uh, LED artery is again divided into two types that is called a superficial bridging and deep bridging. Superficial bridging is one uh, when there is only 1 to 2 mm of the myocardium is overlying the um, overlying the coronary artery uh, and here deep means more than 2 millimeters and what do you mean by long means if more than 2.5 centimeter of segment is involved then it is called as long myocardial bridging. The superficial bridging is more common and is seen in 75 percent of cases. It usually involves the LAD artery. It is situated as usual in the interventricular group, but it is crossed by a muscle bundle either perpendicularly or, an, or at an acute angle. There is also a deep variant in which the left anterior descending artery deviates towards the right ventricle and it goes into inside the interventricular septum uh, with an overlying longitudinal muscle bundle arising from the right ventricle apex and it crosses the tunnel segment. It crosses the artery either transversely, obliquely or helically before terminating in the interventricular septum. So systolic compression of superficial septum uh, generally does not, does not lead to any symptoms. Uh, hemodynamic compromise generally occurs only during the deep in the deep variant form. And also there is a something called as myocardial loop. This is nothing but a myocardial bridging. Uh, if a coronary artery uh, is being overlapped, the, is overlapped by the atrial muscle when compared to ventricle. So usually ventricle muscle overlies it. If the atrial muscle is overlying it, it is called as myocardial loop. And these are generally asymptomatic and it usually involves the distal left circumflex and the distal right coronary artery. Diagnosis. Community diagnosis. Coronary angiography is the most common technique for diagnosing the myocardial bridging. It shows... Uh, systolic narrowing during systole there will be narrowing as you can see here you can see here this is a left anterior descending artery you can see here so in during diastole you can see there is normal appearance here whereas in systole you can see here there is narrowing of this coronary artery vessel you can see here clearly there is a significant narrowing here but however it doesn't show much thing second thing is intracoronary doppler so doppler tip guidewires uh, show a characteristic spike and dome pattern or a finger tip phenomenon with abrupt early diastolic flow acceleration rapid mid diastolic flow distillation and a mid to late diastolic plateau is thin. So all these uh, things can be exacerbated by the nitroglycerin provocation as well. Third investigation is intravascular ultrasound that is called IVUS. In On IVUS, the tunnel segment of artery clearly demonstrates systolic compression. So tunnel segment, will be inside the one over the part which is inside the myocardium, it uh, demonstrates the systolic compression and also gives uh, appearance of a half moon appearance. You can see here this appearance. So this is the muscle which is overlying it. It's appearance, giving an appearance of a half moon appearance. So I will still remains an important confirmatory modality when angiographic diagnosis is uncertain, especially when combined with provocation testing with nitroglycerin, acetylcholine, dobutamine, or a rapid atrial PCR. Fourth investigation is fractional flow reserve or FFR. FFR assessment has been proven to be an important tool in the physiological assessment of myocardial bridges. Dobutamine provocation appears to be more accurate when compared with adenosine for FFR uh, as dobutamine uh, leads to inotropic contraction and this contraction is the basic physio physio pathophysiology which is responsible for the symptoms to appear in case of myocardial bridging. Cardiac CT is another important thing which has, is a more valuable and can give a better coronary anatomy and patency can also be checked with it. Coming to treatment, myocardial bridging, uh, the first line therapy is a medical therapy. So you can either give a beta blocker or a non-dihydrotypin calcium channel blockers. So this beta blockers and non-dihydrotypin calcium channel blockers, what does they do is they decrease the heart rate, decrease the contractility of the ventricle. And when the muscle contractility is less, much less compression of the coronary artery and less chances of developing the symptoms. 
nitrates are contraindicated uh, because nitrates are known to cause an increase in vessel wall compliance as well as reflex sympathetic increase in contractility. So nitroglycine should not be given. Surgery, two options are there. One is surgical myotomy or second is coronary artery bypass graft. In surgical myotomy, whichever the muscle part is overlying that coronary artery will cut that uh, muscle and the coronary artery is relieved from that compression and patient gets asymptomatic. And CABG is just bypassing that. As you can see, just we, we bypass the we bypass the vessel whichever is uh, wherever there is a compression and bypass it the CABG. There is an also a uh, term called, uh, have, there have been also been studied which has seen uh, percutaneous coronary intervention on myocardial bridging. So this is as this is uh, drug eluting stents or that it contains a metal. So this metal will prevent the compression of uh, the the vessel vessel uh, as they are predicted. But it has been few rep various reports that um, there has been various reports that this. Uh, higher chances of revascularization uh, has been revascularization or rethrombosis has been noted in this vessel uh, of myocardial bridging. So this uh, use of PCI only for the indication of myocardial bridging is still very controversial. So hope you have liked my video. This uh, study has been all this uh, topic has been taken from the references from these two uh, important articles. One was taken from the Jack and the second one from the uh, Lee, MS and Chen myocardial bridging review review from that hope you have liked this video if you want more video like this do subscribe to my youtube channel dr akif Bay. thank you